How many of you all uh, tune into the Noonday um, presentation? Any of you all? The Noonday on Wednesday, we have prayer meeting on the Noonday. Um, Not prayer meeting. Huh? We have prayer. We have what? At 12 o'clock? Yeah, 12 o'clock on Wednesday. Did anybody tune into that? Yeah. Okay. Well, if you haven't been, I, I met a, and we're going to get started, I met a lady today. I pastored 11 years ago. Uh, she left the city of Grapevine and went to a city called Virginia. And I didn't know where she was. And today she chimed in. And uh, she said, is that really Reverend Ryan? Reverend Ryan? Yeah. And I just, she made a phone call and, and called and said that was me. At the end of the uh, conversation, she said she wanted to sow into this ministry. Yeah. She had several businesses. And so this thing is really working. Are we ready now? One, two, three, four, five. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Um, grateful to God to be here. This is another wonderful day. Amen. How many of y'all know it's a wonderful day? Amen. Amen. Can you put your hands together? Let's give God some praise in the world. Amen. 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 The writer said, this is the day that the Lord has made. Yes. And uh, we are going to rejoice and be glad. Amen. I don't know how about you feel about it, but I'm glad tonight. Amen. I'm glad. I'm glad to be alive. Amen. I really am. I, I cherish. I guess it took me to get uh, a little older. I guess that's what happened in my transition in life. Uh, you know, I've always appreciated life, but I, at my age now, as I get older, uh, I'm appreciating life even more. Amen. Just to be able to get up, just to be able to get up and get myself around and drive the car for myself and know what direction I'm going. Amen. I'm going east. I know I'm going east, and I'm going. So I'm just blessed. Amen. And I'm blessed to have all of you here tonight. Any of y'all feeling blessed tonight? Amen. Amen. Let, let us pray. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for this opportunity uh, to gather. Uh, we thank you for this opportunity for us to gather. And we, we thank you for the courage of the people who have gathered because thank it's taking courage these days. It's taking fortitude just to be able to gather so that we might engage in your word. I want to thank you for the courage that you've given all of these that are here. I pray that in eventually those who, who, who lack the level of courage to be here, that they will come to the level based on their own personal situation, that they can come and, and join with us. Now, Lord, as we come into your house, uh, we ask that you would provide safety. Uh, we ask that you would provide care. Uh, we ask that you would keep us safe and sound while we are within the confines of this building. We pray, God, that you would uh, send your inoculation. We, we say it every week. We pray that you will send your own personal immunization yes, uh, because you have the ability, you have the power, you have the substance that you can just breathe in this place. And whatever might be harmful and dreadful to us in just breathing and inhaling, you can wipe it out. And so uh, we ask that you would do that for us because we're on a mission, Lord. And that mission is to gain all the knowledge and understanding of your word, that we might be better people, that we might be more productive people, that we will learn how to treat one another as you would have us to treat uh, one another, that we might uh, leave this place, this earthly tabernacle, this earthly habitation that we have, and go to a place where there's no more dying, no more sickness. And we ask all of this in the precious, proud, and prominent name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 And we are grateful to have you tonight. We thank the Lord for your being here. We are grateful as we make ready now. Uh, last week I told y'all to marinate. I uh, hope y'all chewed on that fat meat uh, that I gave y'all last week. Uh, and so we left off talking about forgiveness. Forgiveness uh, is something that we all need a lot of. Yeah. And I'll say yeah. amen. And, and I'm, I'm happy to report to you uh, that I'm, I'm, I'm pleased because I had several people come to me and say, I'm grateful for you for making this presentation. Yeah. Now, yeah. what I really want us to do to be able to be successful, because I'm sure, I, I'm, I'm almost in fact, because I've passed three churches, and I'm not just speaking off my off the cuff. I know that in, in dealing with each other sometimes, we have a tendency to offend one another. Yeah, we have a tendency sometimes to fit in one another. And, and if you've been in the church long enough, uh, like I have, like some of us have, there has been a time when you've been offended. 
Yeah. If you'll tell the truth about it. If, if you've been in a, and I don't mean to sound right, if you've been in a black Baptist, a black AME, whatever, in a black church, you've been offended. Amen. Amen. And so in order to be able to move forward and to be in the spirit of God, you got to learn how to let go of some things, right? Yeah. That, I'm talking to somebody right now. I'm talking to somebody who's looking me right in the eye and know what I'm talking about because you're still yet holding on to some things that happened years and years ago. And what happens is when you don't learn how to forgive, then you're held captive. Amen. You're held captive by something that happened so many years ago. Uh, how many of you ever had the privilege of flying? Uh, long before they start charging you for your baggage. You remember, there was a time when you went to the airport, you could check all your bags, right? Now, I always thought when I was flying, I always thought it was just, unless I had something that was really important, I always thought it was just needless to walk around the airport with baggage. Mm -hmm. I'm going somewhere, but go with me. I always thought that if I got the bag and I have the capability of checking it, it's better for me to check the bag so somebody else can be responsible. Yeah. Well, in life, we carry a lot of baggage that we unnecessarily shouldn't be carrying. Yeah. And what forgiveness does, it, re, it, it alleviates us from having to carry all this excessive baggage. Baggage is like strife. Hello, somebody. Uh, bag is like envy. Yeah. Come on, y'all, talk to me. Bag is like jealousy. Yeah. Bag is like backbiting. Yeah. Uh, these are kind of, this is the kind of stuff we need to discard if we want to be what God wants us to be. Is there anybody who wants to be what God wants you to be? Okay, what you're going to have to do, you're going to have to learn how to check your baggage. Somebody said, check my baggage. And, and, and unlike riding on an airplane or going into the airport, the Lord won't charge you a surcharge. Hello, somebody, for checking your baggage. He won't charge you for, for, for checking jealousy. He, he won't charge you for checking gossip. Hello, somebody. Matter of fact, he's ready and willing to discard it for you at no charge. Yeah. So forgiveness is if we, we, we need to ask for forgiveness as often as yeah. we need to. Amen. 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 Now let me let me just say this. Let me say that. Now I, I said this to everybody. Now if you got a problem, if you're dealing with a problem and, and whether it be substance, alcoholic, or whatever it is, what you really need to do is pray and ask God for a deliverance. Yeah. Hello, somebody. How many of y'all know the Lord will deliver you? Amen. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's why the writer said he brought me up out of the horrible pit. Uh, sin is a horrible pit. Yeah. I'm on somebody, and not only will he bring you up out of the horrible pit, but he will forgive you for being in the horrible pit. Mm -hmm. Right? So, so you got, you got, you got to ask the Lord. Now, when I always, when I was dealing with the problem, I would ask the Lord to deliver me because it don't make sense to just keep asking the Lord. Uh, for, for I'm doing stuff and testing God because at some point I can provoke God. Mm. Yeah. Hello, somebody. Yeah. If, I, if I got a problem, Lord, deliver me from the problem. Yeah. Right? Because He will deliver you. Mm -hmm. And He's going to do it in His own time. Oh, yeah. You can't tell Him the hour, of the day, the month, the millisecond. You can't tell Him. You just got to pray and accept the fact that He will yeah. deliver you. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. As believers, we, we, we are made right. If we are justified, it's not, in, it's not in here, but we are justified by our faith. That's why faith is so important, right? It's because when we think about Abraham, what made Abraham right with God was his faith in God. It's through our faith that we are justified. That word justified means that we are made right. Hello, somebody, right? Because there is no condemnation to those who are in According to the Corinthians, there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ. Yeah. Right? Right. Okay. I, I, I forgot, I left some words. Because if I don't ask for forgiveness, that old pattern of sin. Mm -hmm. That's it. Right? I'm saved now. I know I'm saved. I don't have to seek no counsel. I know I'm saved. But if I don't keep asking for forgiveness and stay on my knees, that old pattern of sin. You know what it'll do? It'll resurface. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. So like if it's COVID-19, you know, I've, I've been washing. My wife will be in front of me. Uh, when we go in, when we finally get in, I get the, I get the claws. I didn't really live in a little bit, but I used to get the claw. I'd wipe it down. I'd reach back outside and wipe the groin button, and then I'd reach back outside and hit the knob, and then I'd close it. Uh, 
I got grills so while I'm wiping, I don't recontaminate. Hello. I get I do that. I go into the uh, to the washing machine where the rim was when she touching it. I'd wipe that down. Hello, somebody. Uh, the knob over there where she turned the dryer on, I'd wipe that down. Hello, somebody. The sink where she was washing dishes, I'd go to wipe those knobs and the knobs on. Hello. Hello, because what I was trying to do is make sure that those germs didn't resurface. Y'all ain't said nothing. Y'all ain't said nothing. And so that's kind of like it is with forgiveness. Every time we ask the Lord to forgive us, it's just like putting Lyso on bacteria. Right. It keeps it from resurfacing in our lives. Hello, somebody. Sinful habits in our lives hurt people. I'm, I'm, I'm guilty. I've hurt some people. I didn't do it intentionally. Mm. But I know I've hurt some people. Yeah. Hello, you do you have to. Yeah. You might well put your hand up too. Put your hand up. If you don't do nothing, just exercise some calisthenics. Hello. Since we can't do jumping, just put your hand up. Because at some point in your life, you've hurt somebody. Hello. Yeah. And you've been hurt by somebody, right? And so that's why you know that you shouldn't hurt other folks because you know how to feel to be hurt. Anybody ever been hurt? I mean, really hurt. I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about on the surface. I'm talking about deep down inside, you've been hurt. And guess what? Most of our hurt come from people that we trust. All right. It's very seldom that strangers hurt us because they don't know how to hurt us. It's the people that we hold in high esteem. Hello, somebody. That hurts us. Hey, amen. That's why I say your enemy, really, really, it's no friend of it that do you wrong. Because, see, a person don't want to run about you and can't really do nothing to you. Right. It's the people that, that know you that do you the most wrong to you. God's forgiveness is un unconditional. Mm -hmm. Aren't you glad about that? Yeah. That God's forgiveness is unconditional. Yeah. Now, some people will give, forgive you and say, well, okay, I'll forgive you, but then they attach all these attachments, right? Yeah. But God, yeah, if, if is what they say. It comes from his, the heart. God does not demand anything. All he wants us to do is confess our sins, right? right. right. When the last time you confess your sins? Right. Yeah. Every day you ought to confess yeah. your sins. Because yeah. yeah. it's not a day to go by that you don't sin. Yeah. Right. And if you sit there and say no, you've already sinned for this day. Amen. Yeah. Right? So there's everything we sin. So we have to ask God. And, and it is it is divine to give forgiveness. Now, some people say, Well, I'll forgive you, but I won't forget. Uh-huh. Alright. Alright. You ever heard that term or the term? Uh -huh. I'll forgive you, but you know what? I ain't gonna ever forget it. <laughs> well then don't forgive me. <laughs> don't forgive me if you ain't gonna if you if you ain't gonna forget it. Now, let me let me explain that. Let me let me explain how that really works, how forgiveness and forgetting really happen. Now, we are human beings, right? Anybody here Superman, Batman, Spider-Man? <laughs> Nobody's been a superhero, right? That's 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 aka human, but you're superman. You go in a phone booth and you change, you know. Nothing like that, right? Well, since we are human <laughs> since we're just middle mortal men, right? Uh, right? Right? Since we're more, then, then, then we need to be forgiven, right? Right. Okay. And so uh, sometimes we get hurt and we need to be forgiven and we have to forgive other folks, right? Right? Right. right? right? It's divine. So, so we, we, we have to learn how to be able to forgive other people for the wrong that they do to us. Okay? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it challenged me because, because sometimes. People say, well, I'll, I'll, I'll forgive you, but I won't forget. Now, I, let me go back to what I was going to say. Is when we say we forget, we all never forget it because we're finite creatures. But what we mean by that, we don't dwell on it anymore. I'm going to pick on Janice. Janice hit me in the head, put a knot in my head. I forgave her. I'm not going to wait till she get around. So I said, oh, no, y'all remember yesterday, Janice put a knot on my head. No, I forgave her. So guess what? The subject never comes back up again, right? Yeah. Hello, because if the subject keeps spurring back up, then I have really not, I really haven't forgotten. I haven't really forgotten. I really haven't forgotten, forgiven it, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Folks should put you on, struck, on straight street and put you on blind, talking about something you did to them 20 years ago. All right. Right? Now, y'all think this is far fetched, but it, you'd be surprised how many people sit up in this church on Sunday morning, on Wednesday night, or whenever the church gathered, that's harboring resentment. 
They can't worship. They can't open their mouth to say amen because they sit there mad at somebody. Yeah, hello. And that's all they focus focusing on. The preacher preaching his heart out. The choir singing their heart out. Hello, somebody. The children are performing their heart. But I'm so hard hearted that I'm looking over at that person that did something to me 20 days ago and I ain't let it go, right? And I, you think you're hurting that person, but in the reality, you're missing your blessings because guess what? You've lost your joy over something that didn't matter to him a baby. Oh, y'all ain't gonna, y'all ain't gonna, y'all ain't gonna like me tonight. I guess I see already. I'm glad I ain't gonna be able to walk past tonight because y'all ain't gonna like me. So, so we got to be able. To, somebody said forgiveness. Forgiveness. We gotta learn how to forgive, y'all. We gotta. Amen. Learn how to forgive. Amen. Come on, stand up and sing. You, you come on, read it, read it, read it. If, if, if you do not forgive, if hold on, if if you somebody said that you is me. Yeah, yeah, come me, on, come me. on. If we, me, you, right, uh -huh. don't do what? Don't forgive their men of their transgressions. Okay. Neither will hold on, hold on. So if I am not willing mm -hmm. to take the time mm -hmm. to make the effort yeah, yeah. to forgive my brother mm -hmm. who has trespassed against me. Yeah, yeah. And word trespass means simply have done something that he shouldn't have done. Yeah. Now the other writer says dead dead toss. It's trespass is dead toss. Yeah. It's the same thing. So if I'm not willing to make the effort and it takes listen y'all, it's more than just a notion to say you forgive. It's more than just word or catch your phrase or to just utter some word. It, it's more it takes more than that. Yeah. Yeah. Because if, if it all just took a statement, I can make statements all day. But it, it has to be something, that statement has to be matched with some substance. Right. Read on. Um, neither will your father. Okay. Forgive. So if you don't forgive your brother, right, right or your sister, the Bible, yeah. in this case it's not gender bias, it just says brother because of language. Yeah. You mean women, don't, don't think, well, I'm a woman, I, I, that ain't talking to me. Yeah, it's talking to you too, right? right. right. Don't no, curse with God. That, he missed me on that one. No, he didn't miss you. He, he talking about all genders. Hello. So, so if your brother or your sister, hello somebody, what else? If you don't forgive your brother or your sister, then your forgiveness is conditioned. Hello somebody. It is subject to. Hello. Read on. Read on. Neither will your father forgive your trespasses. It's pretty simple, right? You don't give no forgiveness, you don't receive no forgiveness. Yeah. Is that, is that, do I need to do I need to break that down? Can I can I further expound on that? Or do I do I, are you satisfied with that? If you don't forgive nobody, how about you trample over everybody you can and you want them to forgive you, but when somebody trample over you, you don't send up it. Hello, then you ain't going to excuse Hello. And then not only that, the Bible teaches us if you go to the altar. Come on, somebody. Watch this. Watch this. See, some of y'all wonder why your prayers ain't got to. Because you went to the altar mad at your brother. And you were praying. And you wonder why you're praying. But, well, you got to leave the altar. Come on, somebody. And go to your brother and make it right with him. And then come back and re resubmit your prayer. Because your prayer went nowhere. Hello, somebody. Because oh, guess what? You, you were standing by the brother that you didn't like about the sister. And you call yourself talking to God. And God ain't talking to you because you ain't talking to your brother. As soon as you get to talking with your brother, God will start talking back to you. Because when you don't have no fellowship with your brother, you can't have no fellowship. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Y'all just sitting there looking at it. When you don't have no fellowship with God, you can't have no fellowship with your brother. You can't have no fellowship with your brother. Come on, somebody. Because God refuses to talk to you when you don't talk to each other. Because we all here on earth and we bypass the right and we want to get a call into heaven and talk to God, which is in heaven, and we bypass the folk on earth. All right. All right. And don't say we don't do it. We've all done it. Yeah. Got mad at somebody, and I'm just, you know, I'm. I'm <laughs> All right, Pastor. Did you see? Oh, girl, you know I didn't see you. Looking right in my eyes. <laughs> oh, I didn't see you. Yes, you did. You're right, Pastor. You saw me. Yes, you ignored me. Yeah. And God knows you ignore me. You can tell them lies all you want to that God calls. God knows what's yeah. in your heart. You cannot hide what's in your heart from God. Matter of fact, he know what we're thinking right now. Somebody, somebody sitting up in Bible study, ready to go already. Hello, got, got here late, got here late, I ain't picking on nobody, and ready to leave already. You can't hide from God. Are you skin and grin with me? I'm skin and grin with you. Hey, show y'all 32 minus the two I, I lost. Now I got 30 instead of 32, right? 
We can do that with each other. But you can't fool God. Because right. He knows what's in your heart. Right. Yeah, right? yeah. And He's going to judge you what's according to what's in your heart. Right? Now, grown folks are different from children. Grown folks can put on the best act. Some folks will embrace you and skin and grin with you and kiss you and slob all over you. Eat all the uh, uh, residue on your jaw. And then when I ride out of this back, it's all oh, little rascal, I can't stand it. <laughs> you know, you know, cause we, we come on, how do I know about Cause we've all done it at some point. Yeah. Yeah. Ain't no fooling nobody, we've done it. We give up, I stand in the queue. Tell them, you know, Isaac Hayes said, I stand in the queue. Y'all remember Isaac? Yeah. The guy that had the bald head? Yeah. Y'all remember that, that was before y'all start playing your gospel music. Y'all remember when I said, I stand in the queue? Yeah. <laughs> she said, I love it. And she she know the whole song. <laughs> Don't blow that y'all. I, I still got, as a matter of fact, I was in the closet. I still got my record collection. Right. Somebody thought, right. well, when you got saved, you're going to do away with the Ohio play. No, I ain't going away. Uh -huh. I still got a confunction. <laughs> oh, come on, y'all don't look at me like that. <laughs> I still like to listen to Al Green. Yeah. Love and happiness. Yeah. You do too, you do too. You, you, play, you don't play spiritual music in your house all the time. You know you can Hello. Yeah. You and your wife together. Y'all ain't, ain't playing Jesus love me. Yeah. Come on here, come on here. Got some Teddy Pendergrass playing. Hello. I wish I had somebody. Ooh, my pastor listened to that. Well, yeah, I do sometimes. I do it in moderation. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Forgiving, forgiving uh, others as often as needed. Somebody find, somebody find this one here for me. Uh, Matthew 18, uh, 21 and 22. Uh, we, we, we have to forgive them as often as needed, no matter how many times our brother transgressed or our sister transgressed, we need to be paused and ready. Somebody said paused and ready. Paused and ready. Well, that old source will get on my nerve. Well, I'm going to tell you something. You may think somebody's getting on your nerve, but then there's some people that think you, that you get on their nerves too. Amen. Right? Amen. Right. Right. Come on, read it. Let's read it. Let's then Peter came to the Then Peter. Y'all know Peter now. Uh -huh. let, me, let me tell you a little history about Peter. If Peter was living today, he would be a gang man. He would be... He would be an OG. Come on, because Peter was very impulsive. Yeah. He spoke out of turn. And Peter liked to fight. Yeah. Right. Not only did Peter like to fight, he did a lot of cussing. Yeah. Not cursing. Yeah. Not C U R S E, but C U S S I N G. Right. Hello. Y'all know about that too, right? Uh -huh. Yeah, I know you. I know you got a new walk and a new talk. I'm glad you do, cause I want. I want to know. I want to know you when you had that old talk. Come on now. But he said Peter came. What did he do? Came to him and said. He no. came to who and said? He to came. Lord, he I came to the Lord. Said my brother sinned against me. Uh huh. And I forgive him. Now let me let me let me tell you why Peter thought he was really doing something. Because according to the Jewish way, according to the Jewish law, that a man was only responsible for forgiving four times. So Peter said, well, I'm going to get ahead of the game. Hello, someone. I'm going to show you how religious and pious I am. Hello. I'm going to supersede what the rabbi requires, right? That's kind of like folk in the church. Some folk always want to make it like they more saved than other folks, right? You, you got them in the church. You know, they, they super pious, right? Right? They, 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 they just dripping in the Holy Spirit. They just... Hello, somebody. They just tripping and saying this. And then if you ain't careful, they'll, they'll talk down to you like you ain't quite there yet, right? Yeah. All right, I'm talking about I'm blessed and highly favored. And the way they say it, it's nothing wrong with that. It's good to be blessed and high. But the way some folks say it is after saying, you're not highly favored and you're not blessed. They say, but I'm blessed and highly favored looking down at you. Honey, I'm highly favored too. Yeah. <laughs> if you just want to get taken, I'm super blessed. All right. You just blessed, but I'm super blessed. <laughs> Hello, read on. Seven times. Seven times. Seven. What's significant about seven? I'm seven small people. Like that. What's the significant about the number seven? What does seven represent? Completeness. 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 Read on. Jesus 
say to him, I did not say to you up to seven times, but up to seventy times seven. Now, how, how many, at that 490, seven times seven is 49, right? Mm -hmm. If you put a zero, that should be 490, right? Mm -hmm. I did sit long enough to learn something, man. Showed out a lot, but I said I'm learning something. So he said, not seven, not seven times, seven times seven. Which what he was saying in essence is that however many times is necessary, right? Yeah. Yeah. I know somebody said, well, I get tired of forgiving uh, so and so. Well, listen, your, your father don't forget. He don't get tired of forgiving That's right. you. Yeah. 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 I don't know how many times in the day the Lord has. I don't, I'm not even counting. But I know it's, it's a tremendous amount of time. Each yeah. day, the oh, Lord has to forgive me. Just what if he got tired and said, okay, I'm only going to forgive the Lord seven times a day. Oh, a whole lot of my sins would go unforgiven. Yeah. Right. You heard what you, we just yeah. have sin piled yeah. up. Hello, hello. Yeah. He said, in other words, whatever's necessary to forgive your brother, to restore him, right? Yeah. To bring him back into the fold, then that's what's necessary, right? It's going to be tragic that some of us ain't going to make it to heaven because we wouldn't forgive our brothers. Right. You can't worship God. You can't even get in the spirit when you're not in fellowship. It's Amen. important, y'all, that we be, that's why the Bible said we got to be touching us. Right. Right. You know, when you come to church and wonder, well, Brown didn't make me happy. Quiet, Blevin didn't make me happy. Quiet, man. Well, can't nobody make you happy. You, 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 we've tried our best to make you happy. Yeah. But you, you come in here mad. Yeah. And you leave mad. Yeah. And then you want to put all that on us because you can't predispose. Hello, right. somebody. Right. But you gotta you gotta do what Psalm 100 said. You gotta make a joy for Noah. Hello, when you come into the place. Alright. Yeah. You know, I'm 60 years old. I, I used to entertain folk when I was in my twin cars. They didn't know no better. Just trying to keep people, people happy, sweating my clothes out. Back be hurting on Monday. Hello, somebody. Just trying to just, just, just preach it, preach it, preach it. And folks' expression never change. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus said. Pray the Lord. He'll make a way. I can't do with people like that. I just gotta do my job, and then hopefully they'll get some joy. Hello, and when they get some joy, they'll be able to respond, right? All right. Sweating all my clothes up, getting old, and, and, and if I die, they're gonna replace me, and these folks ain't gonna be no more happy with me gone. <laughs> There's no limit in how often we should forgive one another, right? We should be willing to forgive each other, no matter what, right? Uh, Father, Jesus gave us the model example. And y'all, as I, as I read more in depth, when I think about how they took, um, they took metal chips, mm -hmm. metal chips, and put them at the end of that bullpen. And every time they hit him on his back, it tore his skin. They took 70, they took a crown with 70 thorns, and they forced it on him. They hung him, y'all. Uh, the way the execution was, they hung him that the majority of his weight would be on his hands. Mm. They, 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 they mutilated him. They, they, they broke his body down. They, they, they ostracized him. They spit on him. They done all of these dreadful things. And yet, while he was yet dying, all right. hello somebody, while yeah. he was yet yeah. going to the Father, yeah. Yeah. He found the time. Right. He found the resolve. Yeah. Yeah. He came up with the ability uh -huh. to look at these people yeah. who were doing this dreadful thing to him, yeah. 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 who had come to save them from themselves. And yet he uttered these words. He says, Father, hello, somebody. Yeah. Distinctively, he wasn't muttering, hello. Yeah. Yeah. Most of us would have been so mad we wouldn't even think about no father. Hello. We told him the father sent him to hell. That's what probably we would say, right? But he said, Father, forgive them. Hello. Did he not say that? He's looking at the people who want to kill him that is in the process of killing him. And he uttered these words. He says, Father, forgive them. Right? Right? 
And that's what we have to do. When folk lie on us and cheat on us yeah. and gossip on us yeah. and say man of the thing, we've got to be able to find the result. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. And say, Father, forgive them. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right? He said, forgive them for they know not what? What they are doing. Right? Sometimes we do stuff and we don't know the magnitude of what we're doing. Right? We set things out of our mouth. Even before we give it any consideration, we pop off at the mouth, not knowing that these words that we're saying is hurtful. Yeah, yeah. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. Yes, her, her words can be. We used to say that Johnny May know what our sister Hall know we used to play. Sticks and stone or break our bone. Our words have never hurt us. That's what we said as children. We didn't, we didn't, we didn't have much sense either. We, we didn't know no better. We were just sure us sticks and stones. So ain't gonna break my bones. You know we had the body like with that. Sticks and stones gonna break my bones. But words have never hurt me. That's how we used to do it, right? But now that we got better sense. <laughs> now that we done learned something, been educated. Yeah, sticks and stones will hurt our bones. The words have hurt us a whole lot of less. More than sticks and stone because we can heal from sticks and stone. Yeah. We can take a band aid and some and some cat. Hello, somebody. We can take some peroxide and dirt. But when folks say hurtful things, it's hard to recover from when folks say hurtful things, right? Because yeah. we have killed people's reputation by running our mouths too much. And then on top of that, we don't know what we're talking about. We just yapping, yep, 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 right? But then when somebody says something about us, we can be all out of shape. I'm going to stop for hurting my hip again. <laughs> the parable, y'all find Matthew 18, the parable of the unmerciful servant. Jesus had to teach. You know, how many of y'all know Jesus was the master teacher? Amen. He was the master teacher. He, you know, he, he had the ability. He kind of reminds me of, 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 you know, I used to be in awe and still. I remember when Darrell Bowsley first came to East Texas and he would go on the radio and he said, I'm going to give you five minutes of my time. Uh -huh. And Daryl could say uh, uh, so much in five minutes of time that some people would take him an hour and they would say the equivalent. Yeah. And Jesus is, is so merciful. I mean, he's so uh, tactful in his approach. And what I liked about Jesus, he, he was able to reach the level of whatever his audience was. Mm -hmm. He was able to gravitate. Hello, so see a great teacher, a great teacher, a great orator, a great lecturer, is able to size up the crowd, hello somebody, right. and be able to talk on a level where people can understand what he's saying. Yeah. Now, I know a lot of big words. I, I mean, I got people here with bachelor's and master's degree. Uh, I can talk them big words, but what does it do me good to say all those big words and the people I'm talking to yes. don't understand nothing? Yes. Right. Uh, right, what right. made Jesus so masterful if he was talking to farmers, he talked about grazing. Y'all know what I mean. If he talked with lawyers, he talked about legal problems. Hello. So whatever audience he was, he was able to gravitate yeah. because they knew that he was going to talk on that level so that they can understand. That's why people came from near and far. Hello. That's why he had 5,000 out there in the wilderness that was, that was speaking and following him all the way. And them, and them, and them, and them, 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 them uh, 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 the disciple wanted him to train. He said, no, 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 no. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to feed them in their belly first because they're hungry, right? Yeah. Now, if you come in here at night hungry, you ain't going to hear nothing I got to say. Yeah. But if I put some bologna or some press ham, come on, somebody. Because that's what we were raised on, right? Yeah. We weren't raised on filet mignon. I wasn't. Yeah. Matter of fact, I just learned how to pronounce it. Yeah. Hello, somebody. I used to think it was filet of I didn't know. <laughs> but I do know how to pronounce hyenas. <laughs> y'all ain't saying that. I, I do know how to pronounce spam. Yeah. <laughs> oh, y'all ain't gonna help me with this, are you? Y'all just don't be reluctant tonight, right? Yeah, I, I do know how to pronounce fat back. Yeah. The Lord knows I know how to spell chicken. Yeah. Right. Right? right? So let's look at the parable of the unmerciful servant, right? So you gotta watch what you do. Peter questioned how many times the Lord answered that adequately. He told him unlimited, right? right. But to, what the problem, because Peter, you know, he thought he was doing something uh, extraordinary when, when in actuality he wasn't doing nothing. And Jesus said, not up to seven times, but 77 times. And in other words, don't be unwilling to forgive 
as many times as we miss it. When, the un, when we see the story of the, um, the unmerciful servant, see, some people can dish it out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. My hip is feeling better already. It's feeling much better. I feel my mobility come. I'm going to hurt tonight, but I can feel it now. Some people can dish it out, but they can't receive it. That's why I don't play with some folks, right? I learned a long time ago as a pastor, you can't play with some folks because you can't joke with some folks because some folks take stuff too serious. Yeah. And as long as they, they hyping on you, you know how some folks, your mama does, your dad does, you know, they, all they just ha, ha, ha. But then when you shoot back, mm. now it's a problem, right? Yeah. So I learned a long time, don't joke with people because some folks you can't joke with, right? Yeah. And so, so, so the, the, some people want to, they want to be forgiven, but they don't want to forgive nobody else. Some people think they can just trample over other folk, but then when it comes time to folk trampling over, they don't want it, right? Right? But Jesus said that ain't the right approach, right? Because none of us are grow the afraid that we can't be trampled on. So he, he tells a story about the unmerciful. Hello, somebody. Notice the title. Unmerciful saint. Right? The Bible says, blessed are the merciful, right? Is that in the Bible? Oh, my yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't look at me like I just said something wrong. Did, does it say that? Blessed are the merciful, right? I think that's in that beatitude section, isn't it? It says, blessed are the merciful, right? For they shall obtain what? Mercy. How many of y'all know that we need mercy? Yeah. Yeah. If the Lord had not just, let's, not, let's forget about it. Let's forget about Tuesday and Monday and Sunday of last. And let's just think about today. Had the Lord not had mercy yeah. on us just today, yeah. we wouldn't have made it this far, right? Yeah. Yeah. Come on, somebody, right? right? Thank God for mercy. Yeah, yeah. My, I used to hear my mama walking through the aisle. She, she, I guess this was her way of prayer. She would say, Lord, have mercy. Yeah. You ever stomp your toe? You ever hit your, your, I don't know why they call it that. They say it's your funny moment. When you hit it, ain't nothing funny. Yeah. When I hit my funny moment, I, I don't feel comical. I'm in pain. And I'm going to just be honest with you. Come on, somebody. Let's, right. Let me just tell the truth and shame the devil in here. There have been some times I hit my foot. Right. Stomp my toe. I didn't say thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't, I didn't say, praise the Lord. I didn't do that, I didn't do that, but I can't tell you what I did do. But I had to go and ask the Lord for forgiveness. But that old man and his surface resurfaced again, hello. And if you ain't careful, he'll resurface in you too. And if you ain't careful, he'll resurface while you're sitting up in church. Somebody make it mad enough, that old man will come out in you. Right. <laughs> better, be, better be careful how you handle some of these folks. Some of these folks ain't quite there yet. <laughs> so Sister Allen says, show away. <laughs> so she put me on notice, show away. Yes, <laughs> sir. So when we see the, the, the surf, anybody got that right there? The, the, the essence of that story is that one man borrowed the money from another man. All right? And the man couldn't pay the other man. Mm -hmm. Right? How did that relate to that? When Adam sinned against God, All right. he created a dead term, a debit ledger. Mm -hmm. And on that ledger, when he sinned against God, he created a debt that he could not pay. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Well, hello, yeah. And when he created that debt, the only somebody that could pay that debt was Jesus. Amen. Because the first out of sin, and he came short, he failed us, right? Amen. Right? But when Jesus came, he picked up the tab. Hello, somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, y'all. Come on. Come on. But let, me, let me put it. Maybe you'll understand. You ever been out with somebody? You ever been out to a restaurant with somebody, and you didn't have no money? Mm -hmm. Right? And you said, well, I ain't got no money. They said, well, just come on. Don't worry about it. I got it. Right? right? And then when you went out, you didn't have no consideration for it. You got the biggest steak. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Tell me. You got your margarita. And 
I don't play that. No, you ain't got no money, right? You know you ain't got no money, right? But you ain't got the king, right? Because I told you I got you, right? You don't give me no consideration. Well, at least he paying for this. I'm going to get the cheapest thing I can, right? No, you go in there and get the filet mignon. It's $29, right? But you ain't got 29 cents in your pocket, right? And guess what? Your, your fellow man or woman, they pick the tab up, right? And then you too poor, you pay a tip. <laughs> right? You too poor to pay attention. So what did that, what did that happen? Jesus took the tab, right? Yeah, yeah. The sin tab was enormous. Hello, somebody. It was outrageous. But what did he do? He picked up the tab. Hello, somebody. Oh, I wish I had somebody who was deep in there. He, 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 he picked up our sin tab. Hello. We had run up a dead on sin. And what did he do? He took it. He shed his blood. And he paid. And guess what? He didn't put it on no credit card either. Come on, I pray it in 60 days. Hello, somebody. Come on, I need a deferred payment. Uh -uh. He paid it in full, right? So when this servant was, was unwilling to forgive his, his, the man that owned him, because the, in biblical days, if a man owed another man, he, that man had a right to sell his family. Right? Yeah, he had the right to sell his son. And why, right? Right? If, if, if Jesus had not come and died for us, we would have been in a world of trouble. Yeah. 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 So I got, I got 401Ks. I got all this. And we'd have put all our money in this room together. I don't know how much money we got. I got a little bit. I don't know how much you got. Maybe you put your little bit with mine, we'll have a lot. I don't know. But if we'd have put it all together, we still could have paid the debt. So the unmerciful servant, uh, he was out. He was, he was, he said, okay. He said, uh, he, he, he forgave, the man forgave him. And then he went right along. Yeah. Found somebody. Yeah, yeah. And found somebody that owed him. Yeah. Yeah. Come on now, come on. Yeah. Don't get quiet on me now. Yeah. Got, went right on. I mean, he had been forgiven, right? Yeah. If anybody should be sy sympathetic mm -hmm. with somebody owing somebody, this man should be sympathetic because yeah. he's already experienced what it feels like to owe somebody, right? Yeah. Does anybody here owe somebody? Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. But I always, always, I always made it a practice. Don't never loan money I can't give away. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I don't want to be sitting up trying to tell you about Jesus and the cross or trying to tell you that he'll make a way and I'm looking out at you and you got my money. <laughs> And you smile at me like she got laughing at me and, and I'm just getting mad and mad. And I'm thinking about putting you on a cross. All right. All right. So I, I try not to loan money to people because because if I can't give it to you, then I'm gonna get myself in trouble because it's gonna mess, it's gonna mess up my relationship with God. The Bible says, oh no man. Right. Is that what the Bible says? The Bible? It says, but to love him, right? Yeah. Right? Because, see, the, the lender, the borrower is a prisoner to the lender. Yeah. Y'all ain't saying that. Y'all, maybe y'all maybe y'all owe somebody in the church and you ain't saying that. I, I didn't come to pick on you now. I'm just trying to tell you what's good for you. Go ahead and pay them folks back so they stop looking at you fall side. <laughs> Don't go, because they got they, they, their eyes gonna get caught. <laughs> They look like this, so much, their eyes going their way. They ain't gonna get caught like that. So go on and pay them. Hello. Go on and pay them so you don't owe them nothing. Because see, when people, when you owe folks something, they hold it over your head. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's why it ain't good for a pastor to be borrowing money from his members. Yeah. I ain't out to nobody. I'm just trying to teach the lesson. Y'all yeah. don't, don't have to look at me crazy. I ain't picking at nobody. I'm just telling you what all will happen. Because when I start borrowing money, then you think you can control me. And I'm going to tell you right now, ain't nobody in here going to control me. But ain't nobody going to control me. See, when I start taking stuff, you'll take my slap hand. I can't, you know, I can't discipline. I can't, come on, somebody. Because I can't you teach you good stewardship if I'm not practicing some in my house. Yeah, yeah. If y'all paying my car note and my house bill and my telephone bill, how can I tell y'all how to manage y'all money? And if I had managed mine, I could pay my own stuff. That's right. Come on, somebody. 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 Come on, somebody.
So this man owes the other man his forgiver, his debt has been forgiven. He goes and finds the man. Watch this rascal. He's a rascal because look what he does. He goes and finds somebody that owes him. <laughs> look at his demeanor. He grabs the man by the neck. Sound like some Christians I know. Yeah. <laughs> Grab the man. And come here. Grab the man by the neck. Just been forgiven of his debt, but he grabbed the man and chokes the man. And threatens the man with all kinds of harm. And when the master heard about him, Hello, somebody. The master being symbolic of the Lord, right? He became incensed with anger because this is the same man, right, that I have just moments ago I forgave him. And this rascal got the gall. All right. Sounds just like some of us. Yeah, right. yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. Grab the man by the neck and be a bullet. Yeah, yeah. Some of us are good at being a bully, mm -hmm. trying to intimidate other folks. Y'all yeah, yeah. ain't saying that. Yeah, because you, that's what you're in on. But the Lord got upset with him. Mm -hmm. Right? Because if you want others to forgive you of your debts, yeah, yeah. then you got to be willing to forgive. And on top of that, what this man owed in comparison to what the other man was mere pennies. Yeah. See, how, how is it that, that we can see when somebody else is bad, but we can't ever see the bad that we do? All right, all right. Come on, y'all, come on. I'm, I'm still talking, y'all. The, the mic is still working, and it ain't stopped, okay? How can we, how can, when the Bible tells us, how can you see the board in your brother's eye? Right? Right? This is some, this is a, this is a board, it's in, before I try my glasses, now let me just kind of emulate. This is in my eye. Because you know, when you tend to sit and have something in your one eye, you close that other eye to compensate for that eye. Just keep hello. So if I got a board in my eye and, and you got a speck in your eye, how can I see you? Because I'm busy. You ever got something in your eye? Yeah. 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 Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm able to look beyond all of that and see the speck yeah. in my brother's eye. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's hypocrisy. Right? Yeah. I'm able to point out your shortcoming, but I never, mine is slapping me, literally. Ooh, that hurts. <laughs> right? Mine is slapping me in the eye. Yeah. And I'm just ignoring it, right? Yeah. But I see what Johnny May ain't doing ain't right, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I'm willing to point it out to her. I go to her and say, hey, girl, you know you ain't right. Well, I ain't right either. I ought to get somewhere to sit down and shut my mouth off. I ain't right either, right? Don't get mad at me. Don't get mad at me. Don't, don't, so what I ain't going back last week because he, he whipped me so much this week. I can't stand no more whippings. I'm going to have to stay at home and watch it from so I can throw some at the couch when he says something. Just take it. Up. Every time he says I have an old saying, it's tight, but it's right. Huh? Y'all still with me, ain't you? Okay, so the fellas, we know about that. Let's move on. about that. The lesson in this is, this is how I am Father will teach us, unless you forgive your brother or your sister, you'll never be forgiven. Right? So I'm going to challenge you tonight. This is my challenge. Let it go. Right. Repeat after me. I've got to learn to let some things go in order to free myself. See, what forgiveness does for us, it frees us. Right? Because now you don't have no more control over me. I'm not going to run around here brooding, mad, right, at you then you got control over me, right? right? I can't afford to let you control me, right? So what I'm gonna cut the umbilical cord, right? When I, when I do forgiveness, cut that umbilical cord, you're on your own now, right? I've forgiven you, if you wanna walk around here mad on you, that's on you. 
Now let me tell you this, I'm gonna close, is that once I go to my brother, right? I go, I go to Brother Dotson, I'm gonna pick on him tonight. I go to Brother Dotson, I said, Brother Dotson, Brother Maria, man, I did you wrong. Uh, get out on my knees, whatever I have to do to show my humility, I've done you wrong. And he walks away and says, well, yeah, you did the wrong, I ain't gonna never forget. But I fulfill my responsibility. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I've left the ball at his house. He, he, he can either put some air in it, he can either bounce it, or he can put it in the garage, but the ball is with him now. Because if I go to him and I do what I need to do, the Lord has already forgiven me for what he wanted me to do to go to my brother, right? Hello, and I'm finna close, y'all. Don't go, don't, if, if, if I do something to you wrong, uh, you do something, don't don't go tell somebody else that, that you're sorry for doing me wrong. Come to me, because the offense is against me. It ain't against everybody in the congregation. You tell it everybody, you know, I did the pastor wrong. I, I, yeah, yeah, you, 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 you still doing me wrong. Because you told 900 folk except for me, right? And you hope they'll come to it. But I'm not going to accept that because 900 folk didn't do me wrong. You did it, right? And until you come and, and make it right, as far as I'm concerned, we still ain't right. Come on, somebody. We want to pass the buck on somebody else, but you can't do that. And then I'm going to say this again. I'm closed. We get up in these churches. We get up in there. We give all these big testimonies. Oh, I'm just so sorry. I, I know I've done some people wrong. You know you done wrong. I said this last week. I'm going to repeat it again. You're looking at the folk you've done wrong, but you, hello. Talk about if I've done somebody wrong, and you just cussed me out last week. You know you cussed me out. You ain't got to get up here in front of all these folks. You'd been better off just coming to me and telling me I'm sorry for cussing you out. But you got up here, you sit up with your pie and stuff. If I've done anybody wrong, I'm just, if I've, 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 I've just, if I've done anybody wrong, I'm just sorry as I can be. You're right. You are sorry as you can be. Because you should have had the gall to go to that person and tell them that you've done them wrong. You are sorry. You're right. Sorry in, a, in another sense. Hello, I'm through for the night, y'all. I, I don't, I don't wreck your nerves tonight. I, I, I didn't upset you. I, hello, hello. I ain't telling you something about trying to teach you, right? Because I want you to learn how to let go, so we can really have church on Sunday morning, right? Yeah, so we can really have fire on Wednesday night or whatever. Fire me, whatever. Because if we let this stuff go, we ain't gonna be, when you, when you dragging something. Watch this, y'all. I ain't gonna do too much. When you dragging something on your back, you get tired, right? You walk around here trying to praise the Lord in one breath and carry baggage on you. You gotta let this stuff down so you can guess what? Now you got a newfound energy. Hey, hey! There any questions? I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop here. Is there anybody got any questions about this lesson tonight? Is there anybody that, that want to ask me a question as it relates to this lesson tonight? Anybody? Did, did everybody get a clear understanding? As we, we, we still got a lot of work to do in this, y'all. We got a lot of work to do. Yeah. This, 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 y'all, this series is not nowhere close to being over, right? Amen. And I'm hoping that at the end of the series, you'll have a newer perspective. Amen. Amen. You'll have a better perspective, right? Because I don't want to harbor hatred. I don't want to harbor resentment. I don't want to come to church on Sunday morning looking at Sister Dotson and mad at her. Mm. Right. Lord, hell. I, I, don't, I don't want that. I, I just don't want that. Now, some people can do that. And I guess they can call it multitasking or faking or whatever they call it. But I, 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 I'm good at a lot of things with faking and not one of them. Because if I'm mad at you, don't know it. Hello, somebody. Because the expression on my family will come out here looking crazy like, you know. <laughs> What's wrong with the pastor? Oh, he's just mad at me. <laughs> All right. Okay, shall yes, we? I just want to say. Yes, ma'am. How much oh, I just appreciate you. Well, thank you. You know, it's been last Sunday, Bible study last week, Bible study tonight. You see, we sopranos, we do Bible study. When okay. all this was going on, we still do it on duo. Yes, ma'am. And, and the lesson that Sister Bailey come with, oh, my God. Come on Sunday, you preach those same, those same songs. Yeah. And they just interpreted the word. God is so amazing. Bless you. And the same right. thing tonight about how you talk about how we should take our sister and brother forgiveness. Forgiveness, you know, after Amen. about forgiveness, we was in that lesson with Amen. Sister Bailey Amen. last night on do I think God is so good. He is so good. I appreciate you. Uh, I let me just say this because I don't want to be self-absorbing to this. I don't want to be like bound when it comes to this. But I just thank God for the courage. Yeah. See, this is what I'm thanking God for. Not so much for message as it is for the courage to present the message. Amen. Because these types of lessons are not popular. 
These are not these are not the kind of lessons that people are gonna run down the aisle and, and shout about. It. But it needs to be taught. Amen. We really can't handle nothing else until we get around this. So I thank you. I thank you for your care and word. I really do take that in heart. I appreciate that. But I'm not I'm just want you to know I'm here to try to lead y'all to higher ground. Amen. So this one is it's just rain, y'all. Anybody ever seen a rain this high? You got to hold a higher ground, right? right. Anybody, got, anybody got a, a landscape at your house? When it rains, you have to get to higher ground. Hello, somebody. Right. I'm just trying to get y'all to higher ground, amen? Right. Now, I'm going to upset some of y'all while I'm carrying the higher ground. Right. But get on my back. Come on, fuss in the ear, but get on my back, and let's go to higher ground, right? right. And we'll talk about it. Once we get out of danger, we'll talk about whatever issues you got with me. We'll talk about it when we get to higher ground. But we're going to fuss about it while the water's rolling, right? We get to higher ground, okay? Right. Right. Anybody else? Anybody comments? Any anything else? Anybody want to say before we close this lesson tonight? I appreciate y'all coming. Right. Without an audience, I'd be talking to myself. <laughs> I do talk to myself, yeah. and I'm not crazy because they said you can talk to yourself, and you said as long as you don't answer. But I answer myself. I said, Lord, what are we gonna do today? And I step back and said, Oh man, we ain't gonna do much today. We're gonna just hang around. <laughs> <laughs> but I ain't crazy. I ain't a bit crazy, right? All right, let's pray. Lord, we thank you now for being real tonight. Thank you for the courage. Thank you for the fortitude. Thank you for giving, God, thank you for filling my mouth with the things that others refuse to say. I thank you, God, because I know that my popularity with people does not matter as much as it does my popularity with you. Amen. Amen. And I'm trying to gain popularity every day, every speech, every yes. sermon, oh, every yeah. lesson that I teach. I'm trying to gain popularity yes. with you. Yes. So, Lord, I thank you for the courage thank tonight. You. And then I thank you for these wonderful people who have, since I've been here, since, since I've been here, who have been so receptive and so readily and willing to hear what you have to say. Yes. Yes. I thank you for the eagerness yes. and the great anticipation yes. that people have from one week to another. Yes. Because there are some people in this congregation who can't wait till next week yes. and see what you got to say. Yes. So I thank you. I thank you for that yearning and that yes. desire that's on the inside of these people who want more and more of your word. They, they just cannot seem to get enough. The more they eat, the more they want. Yes. And one good thing about your word, it is not calorie feel. Hello, somebody. Uh, we can eat all your word all day, not pay one pound. And so we thank you for that. That when we get full of your word, we don't have to go out and exercise and work it off. So thank you, Lord. Thank you for New Jerusalem. Thank you for this audience that listens to us every Wednesday night. We pray, God, that something that we've seen tonight and other nights will resonate so much in the hearts of those who are listening that will cause them to change the style of life. Yeah. And Lord, yes, as we go now, we know that the COVID numbers are going up. We know that because we hear it every day. Help us to use some common sense. Help us to use, not, not, not no book sense, help us to use just mother wit. Mother wit, as mama said. Some mother wit. And that's, that's synonymous with common sense. Help us to keep our mask on when it's time. Help us to keep our social distance. Help us not to be so hard-headed to the point we said, can't nobody tell me nothing. Because it's going to be hard for them to tell you something when you're on a breathing machine. It's going to be hard to tell you when you can't breathe and you can't. So, Lord, in the name of Jesus, bless this church. I thank you for this church. Thank you for putting this church in my life. Thank you for putting this place in my path. Thank you for bringing me together with such wonderful people who are willing to follow leadership. Now, we gotta, I'm, I'm going to lead them out of here tonight. We've got to go home because every good thing must come to an end. Well, now, Lord, we're going to leave up out of here. But as we leave up out of here, we want you to get ahead of us. Drive for those who are driving. Hello, somebody. Ride with those who are riding. Keep us safe. Keep us sound. Do it for us. And then early in the morning, when you wake us up, 
We're going to tell you, thank you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody say amen. Somebody look at your neighbor and say amen. Look at your neighbor and say amen. So now look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you came here tonight holding on to some stuff that you need to get rid of. Get rid of it. Y'all have a good night. God bless you.